There's been a multitude of doping scandals in the sport of cycling throughout its history. These scandals have included riders at every level of the pecking order, from the most prominent names in the sport to those just clinging to obscurity. As a consequence of this, we have observed many different responses to a positive test. Welcome back to Cycling Right Now. So there are individuals who continue to refute all that has been said about them. There are the rare examples of those who speak up or cooperate, and then there are those who come up with creative justifications for their anomalous findings. Let's find out. Number 1. The Festina Scandal – Pulling Back the Curtain When Festina team physiotherapist Willie Vogt was stopped at the Belgian border with a vehicle full of drugs shortly before the start of the Tour de France in 1998, it was the beginning of the controversy that would overshadow that year's race and cast a cloud over it. According to the French police, he was found to have 250 vials of EPO, in addition to steroids and other narcotics. Festina's team was disqualified from the Tour de France after its managers and physicians were placed under custody. Nine cyclists were arrested, and they eventually confessed to using performance-enhancing drugs. During the Tour de France, hotels belonging to other teams were searched, the TVN team withdrew, and the riders who remained staged a sit-down protest during one of the stages. At that time, Jean-Claude Killy, who was serving as the head of the organizing committee for the Tour de France at the time, stated, We are in the eye of the storm. We are sorry for what has occurred, but the Tour has had more severe storms in the past, and there will be more in the future. He was completely correct. Disgrace and ultimately death, said Marco Pantani, it'll be number two on our list. A blood test revealed that Marco Pantani had an increased hematocrit level, which resulted in him being disqualified from the Hero d'Italia the following year before the final mountain stage. Pantani had previously won the Tour de France and the Hero d'Italia in 1998. The blood test that was performed at Madonna di Campiglio revealed that he had a hematocrit value of 52%. This was higher than the maximum limit of 50% that had been established by the UCI and is widely considered to be indicative of EPO usage. It took three years for the inquiry into his usage of illegal substances to conclude, and in 2002, he was issued an eight-month ban by the Italian Cycling Federation for his participation in the sport. The Italian eventually prevailed in his appeal against the sentence, but after that, his personal life descended into anarchy, and he spent some time in the mental ward before succumbing to an overdose of cocaine in 2004. Number 3. Fraud on a Massive Scale According to Lance Armstrong the undisputed winner for the award of Most Famous Cycling Story of All Time. After an inquiry into systemic doping was conducted by the United States Anti-Doping Agency, the Union Cycliste Internationale decided to deprive Lance Armstrong of his seven Tour de France titles. In response to what the USADA described as the most sophisticated, professionalized, and successful doping program that sport has ever seen, Armstrong was handed a lifetime ban. After beating cancer and going on to win seven straight titles between 1999 and 2005, the American rider later admitted that he had used performance-enhancing drugs throughout his career. In the course of his career, Lance Armstrong had been subjected to more than 200 tests but had never been detected, a fact that the head of the UCI, Pat McQuaid, attributed to the cheaters being better than the scientists. The evidence presented by USADA against Armstrong was documented in more than a thousand pages and included testimonies from 26 individuals, including 15 riders, who all shared their knowledge of the doping activities carried out by the U.S. Postal Service team. Because of their roles in the plot, two other members of the team, Dr. Michelle Ferrari and Dr. Garcia Del Moral, were also given lifelong bans from participating in the competition. As doping was rampant at the Hero d'Italia in 2001 and 2002, and we are making it point number four. The French rider Pascal Hervé was kicked off of his team Alexia when he tested positive for EPO, and here is where the scandal officially began. Just before stage 17, another rider with Mercatone Uno, Riccardo Forconi, also provided a sample that was not acceptable. The positive tests prompted the authorities to investigate the rooms of every rider from every team that was competing in the race. As a consequence of the search, various medications were seized and the 18th stage of the competition was called off. Dario Frigo, who finished in second place and was fired by Fasa Bortolo as a result of the discovery of illegal substances in his room, later admitted that he had the drugs on hand in case he needed a boost toward the end of the race. He said that he had kept them in his room in case he needed them. At the 2005 Tour de France, Frigo found himself in hot water once more when the authorities detained him for interrogation after discovering performance-enhancing chemicals 
in a vehicle that was being driven by his wife. On number five is Nicola Cesini, an Italian cyclist, was detained by police after stage five as part of an investigation into the selling of performance-enhancing substances. This arrest cast a shade over the 2002 Euro, which was already marred by a previous doping controversy. After that, on number six is the favorite of the race and the victor in 2000, Stefano Garzelli, tested positive for probenicid and was thus disqualified and given a nine-month suspension. Gilberto Simoni, the champion in 2001, withdrew from the competition following a positive test for cocaine, although he was eventually exonerated by the ICF. There were two more incidences before the race was over, involving Italy's Roberto Scambelluri and Russia's Fat Zakirov, who became the first professional cyclist to be found using NESP. These events occurred before the race concluded an improved form of EPO. They resigned from the Giro. Tour de France 2006, Landis in shame, it'll be number seven on our list. The Tour de France in 2006 was considered to be one of the dirtiest editions ever. Top riders such as Jan Ulrich, Ivan Basso, Oscar Sevilla, Joseba Balocchi, and Francisco Mancibo were disqualified one day before the beginning of their race for their involvement in a blood doping scandal that would be later referred to as Operation Puerto. The scandal broke the day before the race even began. Floyd Landis of the U.S. was declared the winner of the overall competition, even though the race was wide open. A urine sample that was handed in by Landis after stage 17 and examined by the Phonak cycling team was found to have an abnormally high ratio of testosterone to epitestosterone. This news was revealed on July 27, 2006 by the Phonak cycling team. Landis was stripped of his championship, given a two-year suspension, and fired by his team after his B sample also tested positive for performance-enhancing drugs. Number 8. Alberto Contador – Stake is to blame for positive test results A court of arbitration for sport imposed a two-year suspension on the Spaniard for doping in February 2012, and he was stripped of his 2010 Tour de France and 2011 Giro d'Italia crowns, as well as 10 additional triumphs. Contador tested positive for clenbuterol after the 2010 Tour, but he claimed he failed due to eating infected Spanish steak. The penalty was retroactive to January 15, 2011. Therefore, he was free to compete in the 2013 Tour, where he finished fourth. Contador's name was also deleted from the 2006 Tour lineup after he and four other members of the Astana team were barred from competing owing to their alleged ties with the Operación Puerto scandal. Contador and his teammates were cleared in July of the same year. U.S. Postal Service cyclist Jonathan Vouders, now 49, acknowledged using performance-enhancing drugs in 2012. The reasoned decision against Armstrong included his affidavit. After retiring, he found the clean team culture at Garmin. The affidavit was submitted by Vouders to U.S. ADA and PDF format. Number 9. Stuart O'Grady He has come forward to reveal that he used EPO before the scandal-ridden 1998 Tour de France. The Festina doping scandal occurred during that year's Tour de France competition, which O'Grady won, giving him the first of his four career stage victories. Only three days after announcing his retirement after 17 Tour de France appearances, he came clean and admitted to doping. Following the investigation by the US ADA that resulted in Armstrong being given a lifetime ban, Matt White came forward and revealed that he had used performance-enhancing drugs for the majority of his professional career last October. White, who was a former teammate of Armstrong's, was given a penalty that was retroactively extended to six months and had to step down from his role as a national coach. However, once the ban was lifted in April, he was able to resume his previous positions as sports director for Green Edge, which is a professional cycling team based in Australia. Number 10. Stephen Hodge After White's confession, Stephen Hodge came out and said that he had used EPO and cortisone during his career as a professional cyclist, which spanned a total of six seasons, beginning in 1989. After confessing to doping, Hodge stepped down from his position as Vice President of Cycling Australia. He was an Olympian in 1996 and participated in the Tour de France six times. So this is it for today. We will be right back with more information like this. Please do support us, and all you have to do for that is to like the video and subscribe to our channel.